Okay, this is welcome to exercise 8.5, creating a stub zone. As I've been recording some of these exercises, I'm noticing some of these times are a little bit on the long side now, so I'm going to try and con um, combine more of these exercises together, especially if I can keep it under 20 or 30 minutes. <coughs> so this first one is going to be creating a stub zone, and this is part of the Microsoft Official Academic Course Administering Windows Server 2012 R2 in preparation for exam 70-411. So in this first exercise, we're going to create a stub zone that points directly to another DNS server. The mindset is a sub zone is a copy of a zone that contains only necessary resource records, start of authority SOA, the name server NS, and an address host A record in the master zone and acts as a pointer to the authoritative name server. The approximate time for this exercise is about 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and get started. And if it works out well, we'll jump right into 8.6. So we need to go directly to Eight point five. So we're going to go to the RWDC. <clears throat> we already have the DNS Manager console open from the previous exercise. We're going to go on to the we'll minimize this, and there we go. All right. So it wants us to we're going to left click, right click on the forward lookup zone, and we're, we're again going to choose new zone and then click on next and we're going to click on the stub zone radio button and then click on next which brings us to the first question of, the, of this section which feature does stub zones brings to DNS better performance redundancy or both so the answer is better performance. Alright, on the Active Directory Zone Replication Scope, which is what we're on now, we're again going to click on Next. On the zone name, we're going to call this L-I-T-W-A-R-E, and then click on Next. On the Master DNS Servers page, we're going to type in 192.168.1.60 Click on tab and don't worry about the error and we'll go ahead and click on next and then go ahead and click on finish now we're going to flip over to server 01 and again click on left click, right click, new zone, next. On the zone type page we're going to click on next and here we're going to type in litware.com and then click on next and then next and we'll click on next and then click on finish now we're going to go back over to the RWDC and we're going to click on the node for the litware and we're going to click on F5 to refresh it Okay, let's see why we're not working. Oh, it should be lightware. Right click. Properties. Alright, so I need to delete this because it's the wrong name. And I'll flip back over to my server. 
Oh, I do have litware here. Okay, there's another typo. Okay, let me go back to the... Right click, new zone, next. Change this to a, a stub zone, next, next, next. L-I-T-W-A-R-E.com Next 192.168.1.60 Tab and you see now that we get the little check mark because we've already created it in the server one. And we'll go ahead and click on next and finish. So we'll go ahead and select right here. Zone not loaded. Right click, refresh, but we saw it was loaded. Back into properties. Okay, why is this not working? So let's double check. Right click, open network, change adapter, not that I think this is it, but let's just check it anyway. One nine two one six eight one dot fifty, so that's correct. Flip over to here. Right click, well, it's correct, Let's change this to edit. And this should be one nine two dot one six eight. 1.60 tab and then OK. I'll click on apply and then OK. And then we'll go back to our RWDC and do right click and refresh. Now it works. OK. <clears throat> OK, you're on the RWDC following along in the lab manual, you're going to go ahead and do the next screen print from here. And this is the end of this exercise, and let's flip right over to exercise 8.6, which is configuring forwarding and conditional forwarding. So we're actually doing pretty well and okay on time. 
All right, so to improve performance, you can control which DNS server's requests are forwarded to when performing naming resolution by configuring forwarding and creating conditional forwarding zones. In this exercise, you're going to configure forwarding and create a conditional forwarding zone. The mindset is by default, when a client contacts a DNS server and the DNS server does not know the answer, it performs an iterative query to find the answer, which means it first contacts the root domain and additional DNS servers until it finds the authoritative DNS server for the zone. However, DNS servers can be configured to be forwarded to another DNS server or a conditional forwarder based on the domain name queried. The approximate completion time for this exercise is 10 minutes. Let's see if we can do a little bit better than that this time. All right, so we're going to flip over to server one. And this time we're going to select the forwarder tab. And the first question, your company uses an ISP for internet service, internet connection. How would you relay all DNS requests through the ISP DNS servers? Um, you're going to configure a forwarder in the DNS. All right, now we are going to right click. No, we're not. Okay, we are on the DNS console. We're going to right click server one and choose properties. And then we're going to select the forwarders tab. And we are going to click on edit. And then in the IP address, you're going to type in 192.168.1.50 and then enter and then click on OK and then OK to close server 1 properties Okay, while we are in server one, we're going to go into the, we're already in the DNS manager, so we want to create a primary lookup zone named Lucerne Publishing. So left click, right click. New zone. Next. Next. And we're going to call this L U C E R N E P U B L I S H I N G dot com. And then next. And then next. Next. And finish. All right, and that brings us to question seven. How do you forward queries to a specific DNS server for a specified domain? You're going to use conditional forwarders. All right, so now we're going to go to minimize this and go into the RWDC. And we're going to click conditional forwarder zone which is right here, right click, new conditional forwarder, and type in C-E-R-N-E-P-U-B-L-I-S-H publishing.com and 192.168.1.60. Enter. And then we'll go ahead and do OK. And click on expand that. With that selected, 
we're gonna if you're following along in the lab manual this is where you do your next screenshot and this is the end of this exercise and this video the next video we will start with configuring zone transfers actually no let's kind of you do zone transfers here because this is the last exercise for this lab So, exercise 8.7, configuring zone transfers. By configuring zone transfers, you can control to which servers the DNS information is copied. You need to configure zone transfers between multiple DNS servers. What are the three types of zone transfers available? And the approximate time for this is 10 minutes. There's only one question left, so I'm going to go ahead and go over it. Which type of transfer copies the entire zone, which is done when a new DNS secondary service for an existing zone is added? The answer is full zone transfer. Okay, let's go ahead and flip back into the RWDC, which I'm already in. And we're going to click on the datum. Right click and go into properties. I'm going to go into the Zone Transfers tab, and with the Allow Zone Transfer option already selected, I want to select only to the following server's radio button. <clears throat> and here we're going to click on Notify. And we're going to type in one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot sixty and then enter. And then go ahead and click on OK and then OK. And this is the end of this exercise and the end of this lab. And again, it's a great housekeeping to go into your Hyper-V. And since we, don't, since we didn't do anything with Server 2, you want to make sure you do a checkpoint for the RWDC and the checkpoint for the Server 01. And that's the end of this video. We'll see everybody on the next slide.